pretty sure this one's gonna bust. Ooh! Yeah. Gotta have safeties. All right, so I was doing this as a warranty job for a customer. I sold him the Jeep and the motor, first motor started knocking, so I pulled it out, actually rebuilt it, and it's got it for sale. And I put him a used motor in, and it started knocking again. And I get so tired of hearing people say rod bearing, and it's not the rod bearing, so I wanna show y'all why. And I'll fire it up. <clears throat> that's what I always tell my customers, if you, if it's like an inconsistent like pitter patter, that's that's okay. But when it's a tap 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 tap, you can count it off. That's a well. I'm not gonna tell you. I'll show you why. But let's get it took apart and we'll look at it. Another job seems like a big job, but you can see it's 9:40, kind of late start, but should have it done by today. All right, so I got the head pulled off. It's the OEM head gasket. When you see this stuff that won't come off, that's OEM. I'm sure this motor's 200,000 miles. Uh, let's see, here's the head. If it was mine, I'd be doing valve seals. That's normally where the 4.0s start using oil is the valve seals just get old and hard. And I'd probably deck it. But like I said, I'm not getting paid a dime for this job. So I'm just trying to do the best I can to help them out. And I got the oil pan off. And if this starts telling you where the noise is coming from, and yeah, we'll get that cleaned up and get the pistons knocked out and you'll see what I'm talking about Forgot to show you there's the head there's the oil pan and we'll talk about that in a second, but it is 10 30 I think I said what I start at 9 40 now I've been filming stuff the uh, What do you call it? the girdle strut brace whatever main brace I take it off It just makes it easier the oil pump same deal. You can leave the oil pump, but the whole time it just drip 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 I put a bag over it. I find it easy just to take it off and makes everything just easier for you. All right, so one thing be sure to do before it's too late. Uh, I know they make little stamps with letters and numbers and all that. I just use a center punch. And what I'll do, uh, if you can see, I'll stamp one, two, three, one, two, three, four. And I always put it on the driver's side just so when you're going back together, you can tell they're all on the same side. And what was I gonna say? Oh. If I can get my light in here, you can see that that in there is probably part of the problem if you can see it in the video. And this is the coolest thing, since there's no pistons in the, or no head on the motor, you can spin it over by hand. It's pretty neat. Uh, Alright, so I got all the pistons knocked up. I'm sure somebody will bash me for this, but I knock them all up there and just let them hang out and kind of see a little problem there. But used to, I'd do them two at a time, let the lift up, let the lift down. Then I realize it's it's not a thousand horsepower, big block, nothing fancy. It's a junky Jeep. So I'll get them laid out here and show you. Got them laid down here where you can see. You can tell that's obvious why that's a noise. I'm sure the piston probably flexes this way. And when it pushes back, it smacks that side where you get the actual knock from. I don't know. But little pieces, they fell in the oil pan. And what is crazy is... If you look right there is a crack I don't know how far it carries right there is a crack same thing I'm sure it carries over right there is a crack oh uh, that one is cracked this is one, number six is the only one I can't see a crack and I don't mean it's cracked but obviously the big one is where you get the pick from and I'm just curious if those little cracks is what I call the inconsistent pitter-patter and maybe one day and you know when I can afford stuff like that I'll put a bunch of these pistons in to have the little cracks with new lifters because I'm not sure if it's actually the lifters making that pitter patter or if it's those little little microscopic cracks but like I said maybe one day when I can afford to do cool stuff like that I'll do it just so we all know the know the truth behind it but let's go get some pistons all right so got the pistons loaded up I ain't got to buckle them up luckily my machine shop's not too far away let's go over there and get them fixed up That didn't take too long. If y'all didn't know, my brother 
across the road from my shop, he does machine work. So that's who does all my pistons, heads, and all that. Pretty cool. All right, so, well, you can see his shop's not big, but you don't need a big shop to do machine work. Uh, yeah, got the pistons laid out. I've, uh, I've never hung around for this process, so I'm not going to teach you anything that I don't know. Maybe he can teach us something, so we'll see. He's turning screws. Oh, it's neat, so it holds it up. Yeah, this holds it level. Safety squints on. So these these Jeep pistons are already weak anyways. And like every single one of them breaks, so I have to preheat them before I even try to press them out. Otherwise you'll break and then you have to chip them off with a chipping hammer. Nice. If and when it starts moving, go with it. That's it. Nice. Since somebody only works on Jeeps, he always has brand new pistons, everything you need for a Jeep in stock. So makes it a little bit nicer on my end. Pretty sure this one's going to bust. Ooh, yeah. Gotta have safeties. Yeah, I can do small block Chevy pistons, anything else. Jeep pistons are the only ones that do this right here. Every single time. So get ahead of the problem. I'm sure somebody's gonna ask. That's the brand we use. I don't think we've ever had any come back. And if you just wanna help you machinist out, the front mark there, the little arrow, he made me put marks on there so when he's pressing them on i guess it makes his job easier so now we've got pistons got piston pins and we got rods but we do not have pistons and rods together and do not try this at home he had a guy try to do this with a blowtorch and put them on backwards cracked them. it's just just don't pay somebody that knows what they're doing so always check make sure this flows freely through here should be no effort at all, even with no oil on it. What I like to do, a little oil here, there, with your finger. That's all you need. Nice. <laughs> so I've got all these marked, face them forward. Arrows on the front. Got all these marked. So the arrow's supposed to be facing this way. So everything's lined up. All of them's ready. I'm gonna put them in here. Oh yeah, we'll we'll start this one off. Give it a second, then I'll throw another one in. So we're just going back and forth, back and forth, so it goes more smooth. Normally on these, I use this little fixture right here. You can set the depth and how you know how lined up this is. But I've done so many of these Jeep Jeep ones before. You just I do them by hand, and you can get them close enough that it doesn't matter. So if you don't know how a press fit piston works. This pin right here, and this hole, this hole is smaller than this pin. So what we're doing is we're heating this up so it'll expand just enough to slip it onto this pin. Once this cools, it's not gonna come back off. Dude uses the free O'Reilly Magnus to catch dust off his bench grinder. <laughs> all right, so this is the part where we have to be swift. You can only do this one time, and if you mess up, you get to start all over. Pull it out. Fast. Fast. Line everything up. Slide together. Get everything centered. Let it sit for just a split second. 
And the cool thing is, is you know it's cooled down enough, everything locks up. Like you can't even move this. And the cool thing is, is once it once it equalizes, I don't know if we got enough time on camera, but it'll fall down by itself. Huh. So the pin swelled up in a it equal there you go. went right there. Wow. So once everything equalizes, it's all locked together and obviously all the heat transfers to the piston. And once everything's set, it's not going anywhere. Huh. Didn't know that. And just like that, we're done. Pretty much any aftermarket piston that you put in these is going to be better than the stock pistons that come in the later model Cherokees and Grand Cherokees, but these should be ready to go and Dex owes me $60 now. Just FYI, support the bottom of the box. Don't ask me how I know. Alright, so I probably lied. It is 3 o'clock. Well, We've been picking up sheep, moving cars. So in a full day, you can get this done because I've done it, but just stuff happens. So never detail over, never overhead detailed ahead. So I got that done. Got the block cleaned up. This stuff over here is a booger. Don't overthink it because I mean, worst it's just going to seep all. But the biggest thing is these bolt holes. Be sure and blow them out because in theory, if they're full of fluid, fluid don't compress, you run the bolt in and as tight as you torque a head bolt, it's supposed to blow the side of the block out. Not saying it ain't gonna happen, but that's in theory the way it works. So I'll show you this. Just take a rag. Don't scratch the paint on the front of your vehicle. Cup it, let's see. Most of them probably dry. Every now and then you'll get one that's full of stuff. Don't blow that one out. It goes into the coolant. And this one. Oh, I lied. That was that hole. Alright, so I don't know if I'm going to use that footage. Don't blow that hole out because that goes into the antifreeze. And be sure and put Permatex on that bolt. I thought that was pretty neat. I always use brake cleaner to blow the cylinder walls and the crank out. And I'll clean it when I get on the bottom. But as far as your head can lean, you can only see the front three cylinders. But what's cool is wherever this one is means number six. And then same thing here, number two would be the same as number five. And three and four the same. That way when you're trying to blow it down there, you can you know exactly where it's going to be because you're looking at that. Alright, so I'm sure there's probably five million videos on how to put rings on. So I'm not going to show you how because everybody's right or wrong. So I'm just going to do it and it's how I do it. Alright, so I got all them rings put on there. That takes forever, so boring. But uh, got all the grease put on there. Still got to smear it out. And I'm going to show you. I like this stuff. It just seems to stay on there better. And I know they make stuff like that. But every time you do it, it's stringy. And it gets everywhere. And it's just, I don't know. Just something I thought y'all would like to see. Alright, so one thing I uh, meant to tell you is be sure to smear this grease out. And you, like, you shouldn't be able to see any of the bearing. And do not put it behind there. I know you wouldn't think it. I used to do it so the bearing wouldn't fall off, but that changes the tolerances. And I was going to say, I feel like I'm sharing some basic information sometimes, but I realize kids didn't grow up. Well, kids nowadays probably ain't grown up doing the stuff that we did. So stuff that I've known for years, you know, nobody might have taught them that. So I'm just trying to show the basic stuff I can. All right. So next, it doesn't matter where you start, uh, but usually you'll do the two, uh, not opposing, whatever goes together. But I center the crankshaft at the very bottom and that just makes it easier on me and i usually don't get this professional but i knew somebody in comments would but i've got these little rubber caps i put over there so you don't scratch the journal or whatever but i'll get the rings on there and slide them off in all right so on the rings i've seen so many videos people talk about where they're supposed to be i don't think it matters because they spin but i usually just put one there in the corner then one there in the corner wherever the oil ring's fine and on the the ring compressor you can see this one's lower than that one I always put this at the bottom and as you're going see how it walks up just try to keep that straight as possible and this gets tighter than you'd realize and then i always get done and just kind of give it a tap around and try one more click 
Yep. So now make sure you got the right one for the right hole and slide it down there. And always make sure the arrow's forward or if it don't have an arrow, the flat spot will be on the driver's side. And slowly start tapping it. You'll feel the rings and it'll slide in there. Be sure if it, something catches, what'll happen is this part will slide down and get between there. So if it catches, be sure to watch for that. Now go ahead, if you're good and careful, you can go all the way just real carefully and it seated itself. All right, so one thing to always watch for light went off, is the lock right there. And if you can get in there, you always want the lock on the driver's side. So just watch that and make sure they match. Something I always do, as soon as you torque them, 33, if you don't want to look it up, foot pedal, is I put a mark on there. And see, I've done, what, two and five. And when you get done, I have to put a wrench on it now that it's got new rings and stuff. But just check it with a wrench to make sure you ain't got the caps mixed up. One of the little tricks I do, you don't have to prime the oil system on something like this. So what I'll do is I'll fill it full of gear oil, thicker the better. And that just makes it real easy to pick up prime on startup. Don't forget your permatex between the timing cover and the block and where the main caps meet the block there. Pack it in there. I know Felpro makes these things here. I don't know what other companies use them, but you screw them in the with it, the bigger holes and that holds your oil pan gasket. And actually, I'll try to video it. When you put your oil pump up there, or oil pan, it holds it for you. Be sure and clean the oil pan out because those pieces of piston are aluminum. So they'll just keep floating around in there. Never actually go anywhere. You can see them right over there. All right, so I got it bolted up there. And one little trick is the bolts of the studs. I don't remember exactly where they need to go, but to get everything started, they're, so, they're the easiest ones to use your fingers on. Always just spray the head bolts off and let them dry. All right, so on the head bolts, my oiler's broke. I just use this stuff. It's awesome. Be sure to get them on the, I guess you call it the shank of the bolt. Except for one. It gets permatex. I'll get you on that in a second. All right, so one bolt gets permatex around there, and then make sure to coat the threads good with that. And it goes into that water jacket that I messed up on earlier. And be sure not to forget that the ones of the stud that holds the valve cover gasket, make sure to get them in the right spot. 20, 25 in a circular motion, work your way out, and then go 45 foot pounds, same thing. Then swap to the big one, go 110, except for the one with Permatex. It only goes to 100, and I used to disagree with that until I started seeing blocks actually get cracked there. I guess it's a weak spot in the casting, but...
Be sure and do that at 110. I mean 100. All right, so these are all hydraulic lifters, so you can just run them down. Be sure, and this sensor right there bolts to the head. Don't bolt it right there. My worker did it one time, and it was a pain to figure that out. And that's what the internet says that is a computer ground. And I don't disagree, but I call it a knock sensor, and it's not called that. But it's so funny, the year, I think, oh, one, two, three they went away from that sensor they went to knock sensors so it's kind of ironic that that's the way that worked out all right so just got it back together got everything topped off got the antifreeze in there this is first startup i know you probably won't believe me watch the oil pressure it'll take a while with no oil pressure there it goes Little miss to the lifter settle in, that sounds much better. She's running good, but it's uh 7.30, just a little bit behind schedule. All right, so I was kind of pinched for time last night to finish this Jeep up. We've had some uh, <coughs> tough truck stuff we had to get done, but as I went and drove it, and as you can tell, it runs perfect, no issues, no rattles, of course. So I'm sure a customer will be happy because that's free on them. I ain't charging them nothing. But if y'all like watching this stuff, just let me know. And if you don't, I mean, let me know. But this is what I do for a living. So as you can tell, I've got Jeeps everywhere. And I do pretty much everything with them. So just comment what you'd like to see. And if you don't like this stuff or if you think I should be more, how would you say it? Explain. I don't know the word. If, but I'd like to explain better, but I know some people don't care about that stuff. But just either way, let me know what you'd like to see, and I'll try to make a video. Thanks, y'all.